When I had wrote Icy Girl, mm -hmm. it was a really difficult point in my life. I was writing rooms off of Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I was like broke. <laughs> um, the situation just wasn't icy at all. <laughs> I wrote it in my room with no furniture and a mattress. And um, I was just writing about everything that I wanted to accomplish in life. And I'm extremely grateful because I thought it was just gonna be, you know, just another post on Instagram. To know Saweetie is truly to love Saweetie. See, I can sit here and make these documentaries about these celebrities all day long, but something about Saweetie is just different. We actually got to witness her rise to fame. If you wanna learn more about how Saweetie became the icy queen than she is, keep on watching. <laughs> Diamante Quayava Valentine Harper was born on July 2nd, 1993, and her upbringing has so much to do with her appeal. Um, so I grew up, you know, in a multicultural background. My mom is Filipino and Chinese, yeah. and my dad's black. And growing up, I feel like I struggled with, you know, adapting to the different environments because yeah. they were like night and day. She says night and day, but ultimately it became her strength in how she learned how to captivate different audiences. You know what's Requesting. funny? So my Filipino, like my uh, the Filipino following calls me, they call me Ate Icy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Ate yeah, means? Yes. It's like a respect for right, right, right. older. That is hilarious. But it's so cute and I'm just like, look at that. It's all about having a dream and a vision of what you want your life to be like in the future. And Saweetie knew early on that rap was in her future. I was 14 and I wrote a rap and I went to school and I rap for like, my homeboys in the class, Stop. and they were like going crazy. So I was like, ooh, I might be good at this. I went home and I heard the Amelie. I was already writing, I was already writing poetry, and I was like, I want to write something over Lil Wayne's Amelie. I wrote it, went to school the next day. Stop, over Amelie. And they went crazy, and I was like, okay, it made me confident to go do it. Social media is just that gift that keeps on giving. And so we just started posting videos of herself rapping over popular beats on Instagram and called them her car raps. I was known for, you know, rapping in my car and I was doing that because I didn't have, you know, money for the studio. I didn't have, you know, resources. So right. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do my thing on Instagram and Twitter. Plus what it is, hustle far from fancy. If a nigga moving funny, then he moves in chancy. All the helps and my support when it's really all the same. Uh-oh. Yeah, I've been real broke and I ain't never going back. That's a daily motto. Uh Honey, what you think this is? That I was getting money from pay trips and big See, I ain't into making money off of cock and thongs. I'm into making money off of stocks and bonds. She then began manifesting through her music writing, which ultimately changed her life forever. When I had wrote Icy Girl, mm -hmm. it was a really difficult point in my life. I was writing rooms off of Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I was like broke. <laughs> um, the situation just wasn't icy at all. <laughs> really interesting to see where Icy Girl is headed. Um, I wrote it in my room with no furniture and a mattress and um, I was just writing about everything that I wanted to accomplish in life and I'm extremely grateful because I thought it was just going to be, you know, just another post on Instagram. But, you know, it's touching radios, it's making charts, and I'm really excited to see where it's headed. See, success doesn't just take place overnight. Just as many artists, Saweetie had her fair shares of ups and downs on her journey to the top. And after I graduated, you know, I think <laughs> my life went down here and then it went up here. I remember when I couldn't afford rooms anymore, I would sleep on her couch. Sabrina ain't trip when I slept on herself. But did y'all hear that though? Her best friend Sabrina was a vital part of her dream chasing. They supported each other along the way when they both needed it the most. And Sabrina wasn't the only friend who helped Saweetie along the way. So I met my manager at a Puma event. I was an influencer mm -hmm. for like the fancy slides. So my homegirl who I went to school with, mm -hmm. um, who also majored in communication, runs the social media for um, Fancy. So she pitched her team. How convenient, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> she pitched them Icy Girl. And there was wow. like, okay, like she fit perfectly with the brand. And I actually do love the brand. So it just worked out that way. That Don't we all all just need that friend that's going to put you on with these money making opportunities a lot of y'all don't help y'all friends out as much as y'all should and y'all need to get on it because y'all could both be making money at the same time maybe it's just a bay thing and if you guys know sweetie you guys know that she reps the bay 
pretty hard. I just think that people from the Bay, like we got a kind of like a different vibe about us. But she later moved to LA like most talents do because that's just the place that kind of catapults your career to a whole new level when it comes to music, of course. Why did you decide to go to college? Um, because I didn't have the resources for a studio and um, I'm from the Bay, but mm -hmm. I finished high school in Sacramento and ain't nothing like really out there to get discovered at. Right. So it was my way of getting to, you know, Southern California. And she often speaks about the women who inspired her. I would say my mom listened to a lot of Kim and Foxy, but what kind of made rap more realistic for me was Nicki Minaj. Um, everybody before her was just super legendary to me. So I just thought that, you know, female rap had its time. And then when she had came out, I was like, wow, like a new face, I could do it too. And she just kind of like turned me on with her lyrics, her delivery and her style. And I fell in love with it. The moment that she met J. Cole was a pivotal point in her life she had the courage to approach him. I was dating someone at the time and he drove to San Diego State, picked me up, then brought me to the J. Cole concert after school. We go to the concert, you know, I see, we see like the bus and it says sideline story and it's him like this, you know, like the basketball picture of him in the gym. And um, my boyfriend at the time was like, you wanna meet him? And I'm like, how are we gonna meet him? Like, he's like, no, we should stand by, you know, the bus. So he comes, he's hella tall, and we're all saying hi, and I'm nervous. And then my boyfriend was like, you should rap for him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> I remember just being so excited. So finally, like, I don't wanna stop, you know, the meet and greet, so he says hi to everybody, and he's about to leave, and I like tap him, I was like, oh, can I rap for you? J. Cole? When we see Saweetie, we see that she just oozes confidence, but she admits that it was even a journey for her along the way. I'm fine, like, you know, I was very like self-conscious, you know, insecure. I feel like as I've progressed, with my career and you know just going to where I want to be at in life yeah. I have slowly built like this confidence so it's not something that has like happened overnight but it's just like when you're like spending a lot of time with yourself and you're like reflecting it's just like okay these are your weaknesses this is what you're not happy about and you know I wanted to like change that because everything's all about mindset so where is Saweetie now well just take a look at these stats from car wraps to billboards, magazine covers, and big features, clothing collabs. And speaking of clothing collabs, this queen even had her own clothing line in college to help fund her education. It was called Money Making Mommies. But I was hustling and I really wanted to inspire women and girls to go out there and get their own money. Mm -hmm. So I had a line called Money Making Mommies. I love it. It was crop tops, it was hats. So I've always been into like making my own stuff and making yeah. it cute. Okay. So the fact that P.O.T. wanted to collaborate just like it was I felt like a little girl Did you know you, you oh know like God, on Christmas so time it's like oh I can't wait <laughs> <laughs> and as we know so is really big in the fashion world so I'm hoping that she comes out with the line pretty soon see guys she was destined for fame it even ran in her blood technically her mom actually was one of the video vixens in Nelly's video <laughs> Sweetie, your mom was uh, in an R. Kelly video? Yeah. How does that go down? Um, she was a video girl. And then Zaytoven is a relative mm -hmm. as well? A family friend cousin. Gabrielle Union? Mm -hmm. Is my dad's cousin. All right. Hey, to everybody. Hammer? <laughs> is my play cousin's dad. See, this is all in the family it's then. so much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The talent, the beauty, the concepts, these videos that she's been doing on Instagram, like the girl is just a catch. Well guys, that's all for the Forever's Here in Times to Know Tuesday on Saweetie. If you guys want to learn more or even want a part two of the Saweetie documentary, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Also head over to my TikTok and my Instagrams and follow me for more news updates.
Thank you guys.